Hey there, welcome back to my channel. So I have a bunch of new products that I've been testing out only for like a short amount of time. So I wanted to do, instead of reviewing them on the blog, I figured I'd do a tutorial with them and give you my thoughts as I'm using them so you can kind of see them in action. And most everything is new, except for one product which is just kind of new to me. So it's gonna be a really simple, basic look, as most of mine always are. And, but like I said, it's going to be all new products so I can give you my thoughts and review on them as I'm putting it on. So let's get started. First, the foundation I'm going to use, this is new to me, but it's not new in general. It's the Lancome Tent Edol Ultra 24 Hour Makeup. And this is, I've heard wonderful things about this. I've actually been using this um, a few times already. And I actually, I adore this foundation. It's a really long wearing foundation that gives you medium to full coverage. I have it in the shade 110 Ivory C. And like I said, it is um, a full, I'm trying to decide what brush to use here. What brush should I use? I have a Real Techniques brush. Oh, here it is. My Real Techniques buffing brush. So it is more of a medium to full coverage foundation. It is quite matte which I love, and it lasts all day, hence the 24 hour. I mean, I don't know if it lasts 24 hours, because I don't wear my makeup for 24 hours straight, but um, it does last all day. This is one of those, put it on and you know, you have a long day and you're going straight from work to somewhere else or whatever, this is the kind of foundation you wanna wear. You know, I've never tried the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I have the Double Wear Light, which I really, really enjoy, but I've never tried the Classic Double Wear, which I hear is like the ultimate in staying put foundation. So I've always wanted to try that. I'll have to give that a try. Let me know if any of you guys have tried um, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Classic, the old school Double Wear that's been around for years and years. And let me know what you think. Okay, so I'm just gonna buff this all in. Like I said, I really love this color. I have the slightly darker shade, which is 140. And I just found that the 110 worked a little bit better for me. It didn't, you know, oxidize. And I prefer if I could, if I can, I like to go with a foundation that's a little bit lighter than maybe one that's like an exact match, just because if it does oxidize and if I want to wear bronze or anything like that. Okay, next I'm gonna be using the new concealer from Makeup Forever. It's their Ultra HD Invisible Cover Concealer. Now they have the correctors and the concealers. I'm just gonna show you the concealer today. Um, I've tried the correctors as well, so you can use those and then use the concealer on top. I'm using the shade Y23, which I was excited about because Y21 was actually too light. So this stuff goes really, really light. However, the only challenge is, and I'm just gonna use it under the eyes, this stuff is full coverage. It is pretty serious stuff. The only downside about it is the color range. I, they had sent me all the colors and I had to double check online if that is in fact all the colors because it wasn't very extensive. So if that was all the colors, hopefully they'll be releasing more colors. But if it wasn't, well that's good because it was not a wide selection. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my Real Techniques contour brush here. I like to use it as a concealer. And I'm just kind of patting the concealer in. This is some serious concealer. That's why you need just a slight, slight amount. But with that being said, it is not a concealer that is going to be incredibly like cakey. It's for being such an intensely thick concealer, it blends beautifully. Like I can barely even see it on my skin and it doesn't crease. It lasts pretty much all day because I've been testing it out um, a few different times and I've left it on for like 12 plus hours and it doesn't crease or anything like that. So highly recommend trying this stuff. And if you wanna buy a shade maybe for your face or whatever, I mean, this stuff like is like locked in once you put it on. All right, 
Let's do brows, my favorite part, not. Um, but I have a new Anastasia brow pencil. She makes, she came out with one that kind of looks like the hourglass brow tool. So it has like that um, angled edge rather than just like the really skinny, skinny point. And then just the spoolie on the end. I got my typical shade medium brown, even though my hair is extremely dark. Um, I don't like to go for brow pencils that are like black or ebony or espresso or anything really, really dark. I actually like to stay with the medium brown tones. And like I've said before in the past, the grayer the brow pencil is, the more I prefer it. And because I, if a brow pencil is too red, ugh, it does not look good. So I definitely prefer a more gray based. And Anastasia still makes some of the best brow pencils. I mean, her brow products are like some of the best around. I really, you know, I do really, really love the Hourglass brow tool. I will say the difference I feel just in using this versus the Hourglass one, which is very, very similar. Um, the Hourglass is a little more gray. I will say, which I kind of like, but this color is really growing on me. So I really am enjoying this as well. This is a little bit stiffer and a little bit harder. I do find that the hourglass one is a bit softer. So just know that, but she, um, she has a really quite a large range now in this new, um, kind of shape and formula. So that's really um, good to know. So if you are an Anastasia brow lover, I would definitely check out that new brow pencil. Okay, I forgot eyeshadow primer, whoops. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put a little bit extra foundation on my eyes. I normally wouldn't do that because I do love to wear eyeshadow primer, but I don't have it in front of me and I'm not gonna get up and go get it. Okay, so for eyeshadows, exciting. The Anastasia Beverly Hills came out with a new um, solo shadows. So, and there were a ton of neutrals. So they come out like, I think there's like an eight palette. Maybe there's like a four palette or a six palette. I don't remember, but there's an eight palette and you can pick the colors that you want. I swatched all of these colors on the blog with their names. I'm going to be using, uh, let me see if I can remember the shade. It's going to be a brown shade in the shade chiffon. So let me show you which one it is in the palette. It's this one right here. And I, like I said, it's swatched on my blog. So you head over there, the link is below, down below. Um, and I'm just gonna, like I said, this is gonna be a really easy, easy makeup look, as all of mine are. But I just wanted to kind of give you my thoughts on these products rather than technique or anything like that. So I, the colors are very, very rich and buttery. There are, I picked mostly shimmer shades. They are mostly shimmer shades. I didn't see too many matte shades, but it's not like a glittery, glittery shimmer. Um, I really enjoy this color chiffon. It is somewhat of a deeper bronze. It's not too orange, which I like. It's more of a, like a, kind of just like a basic bronze that has maybe slight grayish taupe undertones. But I actually prefer a more taupey gray bronze than I do <clears throat> a kind of golden bronze, just cause that's what I like. And I'm just taking like one shade, I tell you like, I am the queen of like one swipe shadows. Like I love using just one color on my lid and then taking it, taking that color like up into the crease. Cause it definitely creates some definition in the crease because obviously you're using that same color. And then once the color gets into the crease, it's going to deepen up and show some dimension. But I could, you know, throw in like a, a crease shade, even like this shade right here, this kind of like, um, tan, Kind of camel shade. You can just sort of throw that into the crease just a little bit. Um, but really just using that one shade is just like all I really basically need. And then I really love the 
this beige shade here. I can't remember what it's called, but like it's um like I said, it's all linked on my blog. And I just like to use it as a highlight. I'm not a big highlight fan under the brow bone with like a super shimmer shade. That's not really me. But I like this because it's um it has just a hint of shimmer, barely, but it's um much more matte than it is shimmer, so it, it's a great um, brow bone highlight. It's also a great lid color. I really enjoy using it as a lid color. I'm just going back over just a little bit um, deeper with the bronzy shade that I was using on my lid. And like I said, I just kind of all over into the crease. It's definitely a little bit deeper in person. It doesn't look so, so dark on camera, which is kind of nice because it's definitely still suitable for a day. Okay, for my mascara, this is actually new. Um, what's the problem about having like a mirror right here? I just keep like seeing something and I keep touching it, touching it and fixing it. Okay, the mascara I'm using is by Blue Mercury's new brand, Loon and Aster. So it's their Stratosphere Volumizing Mascara. And I gotta say, I didn't, I had, like I tried out a bunch of products from their new makeup line and I gravitate towards their like bronzers first and I kind of, I didn't try the mascara. I mean, I got this like months ago and it just kind of sat around because I don't know, sometimes I just have like preconceived notions of like what product is going to be good, what product is not going to be good. And then I tried it and I was like, oh, this product is really great. So I actually really like the mascara. It's a very, um, ooh, now it's in my hair. It's a very kind of spiky brush, which I prefer. I don't like um, really, you know, skinny brushes or anything. I like them to have lots of spikes. And because I like my lashes, as you know, I like my lashes quite dramatic, um, even somewhat clumpy. Not a bad clumpy, but a, a dramatic clumpy. And this gives really a pretty strong um, lash, and it does really build up quite well. You don't need too many coats. I mean, obviously I do because I'm a mascara junkie, but um, you can get away with like one or two coats and it really defines them really well. And like I said, I should, I really should not have judged this, that it wasn't gonna be that great because it is actually fantastic. And I didn't find that it smudged at all because I always had that problem underneath my eyes, like in the corners down here, I always get smudging from my mascaras. Um, and no matter what I do, no matter how waterproof the formula is, it's just the way my eyes are shaped, they always smudge. So I just have to find formulas that smudge less. And I didn't see a ton of smudging with this, just kind of like end of day, you know. All right, so for the cheeks, I am going to use, if I can open it, Oh, I love this palette. The ambient lighting kind of, what is this? The, the palette, the sixth one, the limited edition that came out. I believe it's still available on some sites, so I'll link that below. And I wasn't, you know, I initially wasn't sure that I was gonna love this palette because the pans are a lot smaller. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm really gonna like that. Can my brush even get in there? So. Once I received it and I began playing with it, yeah, my brushes can fit perfectly fine into the pan. And just having all six in one is fantastic. And this middle shade right here is only in this palette. I believe that's in iridescent light. So that's really nice. And I'm using right now dim light, which is the one all the way over here. It's not the yellow one, I believe. The yellow one is diffused. I'm using dim light. And I like, use it like, like using dim light as kind of like a base primer prep on my cheeks. I've been using it forever because it's not super light on me because I'm so fair. It gives like a slight, slight bit of contour. I know that's crazy, right? Um, Cause most people it's like a highlight for them. But for me, it's like a slight contour. And then I'm going to use Luminous Flush, the kind of pinky blush cause there's the, the bronze shade and then there's Mood Exposure, which is like a little more, um, let see if I can get into focus there, a little more plum, and then you have the bronze shade. I know my fingerprints are all there. 
but I'm going to use the middle shade, that real pink one. Um, I actually don't have this, I believe, in a solo, so I was excited to get it. Um, and it, you know, the thing about these is they are quite pigmented. So that pink shade really gives like my cheeks like a nice pop of color. And I just kind of, and the, the, but the powder is so smooth and it just glides on. I mean, you really can't go wrong with the Hourglass. I know some people are not fans of it, but I totally am. I'm like drinking the Hourglass Kool-Aid all the time. There's very few products that I've tried from them that I don't like absolutely love, love, love. Um, so in person, it's quite bold here, but I know on camera, it's kind of showing up just a little bit less. And so, like I said, I use dim light and then I use the hot pink one, the luminous flush. Yeah, it's like a hot pink. All right. I'm just going to take a big brush and just kind of go over that and blend it all. Told you super easy look because we're not doing lots of intricate stuff. And then a new lipstick. This is the Lancome Color Design. Um, and I have it in the shade, um, what is it called? Vintage Rose. So I fell in love with this color. It's a nude, but it's very like rosy pink. And it's just gorgeous. And I like did this look the other day and I was like, oh, I've got to duplicate this for a tutorial because it's so pretty and it's just so easy. I mean, you can see the, the pink is a little bit punchier than like a nude pink. It's a little bit um, kind of like a corally pink. So it definitely shows up a little bit. And so this is the final look. So we did the Anastasia um, eyeshadows on the lid. Just use that one bronze shade. Or I use a little bit of the, the kind of tan shade in the crease but ever so slightly and then the beige shade is a highlight um the hourglass palette on the cheeks dim light and then luminous blush and then on the lips that new lancome color design lipstick in a vintage rose so um super wearable super easy to throw on but i figured i'd give you all the uh, my thoughts on all these new products that i've been testing out oh and the foundation the Tent E Doll, love this stuff. Highly recommend trying this, especially if you want something that's gonna be matte, it's gonna last all day. It's not like a super flat matte, but it will, you know, um, it's more of a natural matte, but it lasts all day. And then the new Make Forever Ultra HD Concealer. And then the mascara from Luna Naster. Okay, I will link everything down below. And like I said, swatches of the eyeshadows are on my blog. So I will talk to everyone soon. Okay, take care, bye-bye.